A woman works hard to give birth to a girl and her husband never comes to see her. He even complained that she shouldn't have had the girl. He also took Maggie's. Finally, Maggie couldn't take it anymore and took the baby to Luke and scolded him. You complacent, conceited, self-centered bastard! Don't ever make me set eyes on you again! Maggie was fed up with Luke's ambitious promises and his emotional abuse. She left the island and decided to take her daughter back to her mother's house. But most importantly, she's pregnant again, this time with Ralph's baby. Maggie finally returns to Drogheda. Her brothers welcomed her with open arms. Even her mother, who had always ignored Maggie, was surprised by her return. Maggie tells her mother that she is pregnant again. Her mother was stunned, but didn't say anything. Ten months later, Maggie gave birth to a son. The mother held the baby and sat calmly. Will you tell Ralph? I don't know. What should I tell him? That he has a son. It turned out that the mother had watched Ralph and Maggie for years and found that they were attracted to each other. When Ralph came to Drogheda last year, he was disappointed to find out that Maggie was married and left. She knew then that Ralph would go to Maggie sooner or later. And the moment Maggie came home, her mother knew why she had come home. Maggie was speechless and angry and said something about her older brother Frank. Her mother was surprised. Frank was the child of her mother and another man. She was 16 years old when she met a gentle, middle-aged man. The man was a very influential man who had been in the business for a long time. The mother was obsessed with him, even if the man would not give up his ambitions for her. She gave birth to Frank and took him away with her. But now she's lost even Frank and neglected her other children. Now it seems that Maggie will follow the same path as she did. In the face of her mother's advice, Maggie still insisted on not telling Ralph about it. She wanted to bring up her children alone because that was the only way she could have what the church could not. That's the other side of Ralph. She poured all her love into her son. She didn't even look at her daughter. Her mother was helpless to deal with Maggie's obstinacy, but she could only help Maggie to make her life better. 19 years have passed and the children have grown up. Despite their mother's eccentricity, son Dane and daughter Justine are very close. Ralph was invited to Drogheda for Christmas after 20 years. Maggie was surprised to see him again after so many years. She hugged her son and Ralph tightly because she knew this kind of reunion would never happen again. This night, Ralph went to Maggie's room. They still had a passion for each other after 20 years of not seeing each other. They talked about their children's future over dinner. Everyone is eager for Dane to take over the estate. But humans are fortunes full. Dane's dream was to be a priest too. Only now no one but Justine knew about his dream. He asked Ralph what regrets he had since becoming a priest. Well, yes, inevitably I suppose. I've missed things. A woman to share my life, perhaps even a son like you. Dane hesitated for a moment to tell his dream. Ralph was surprised. He thought Dane could be successful in anything he did. So there was no need to be a priest. But Dane was a great admirer of priests and of God and wanted to try to fulfill God's will. Ralph was silent when he heard this. He thought how devastating Maggie would be if she found out about this. Dane also understood Maggie's thoughts, so he had been suppressing them. Now Ralph's arrival made him completely overwhelmed. Ralph told Maggie about the incident. Sure enough, Maggie was devastated. Don't you think I don't know you're just here to collect for what I stole? Ralph was so confused that he could only keep telling Maggie to let go. When he decided to become a priest, his mother swore that she would never forgive him. He never saw his mother again, and this became Ralph's lifelong regret. He didn't want Dane to have the same regret. Maggie burst into tears as she listened. She knew she couldn't keep Dane anymore. She decided to send Dane to Rome after he finished his studies this year and let Ralph teach Dane. In this way, she would give Dane back to Ralph and would not owe Ralph anything anymore. Looking at the two most important men in her life, Maggie finally smiled with satisfaction. Dane came to Maggie's room in his pajamas the night before he left to say goodbye. All these years, he saw how good his mother was to him and how partial she was to him, and he loved her very much. The one person he was sorry to leave was Maggie. But Maggie told Dane, Tell you that you've brought my life joy and meaning in ways that you can never know. But I do. I can't share your love of God, but I do understand your need to give your life to him. The next day, Dane left his hometown and his mother to pursue his dream. Justine also went to pursue her dream. She went to London to hone her acting skills. The two siblings would get together during the holidays to tell each other what they had been up to. This day, Justine was waiting for Dane on the street in Rome. Dane was busy with school. Ralph asked his old friend, Rainer, to pick Justine up. Rainer was tall, handsome and polite. 
he was willing to listen to Justine's heart from the first time he met her. When Justine had no place to stay, he brought her home and cooked her a delicious dinner. His every move kept touching Justine's heart, but perhaps it was because she had been neglected by her mother since she was a child. Justine always felt that she didn't deserve love. She was always hesitant to face Rainer's advances and resisted them intentionally or unintentionally. For three years, they became good friends. Whenever Rainer needed her, Justine would step in as his companion, but otherwise there was no progress in their relationship. The new pope was about to be elected, and Ralph was one of the candidates. And his popularity was very high. In the past few years, Dane has been following Ralph's side. Ralph was also interested in training Dane, and wanted him to become the next himself. Four years later, Dane became a successful priest, and was about to be ordained. Justine flew back to Drogheda with Rainer, and invited Mickey to watch the ceremony for Dane. But Maggie refused because she didn't want to influence Dane. Justine couldn't understand it. Well, I hope they're damn good ones. I hope they're worth hurting Dane as deeply as you're going to. Yes. You're really something, Mother. I mean, if it were my ordination, I would understand it. But Dane is supposedly the one you love. She leaves in a huff. Rainer stays behind and tells Maggie that Ralph is sick. Very sick. But Maggie didn't react either. Later, Maggie really didn't attend the ceremony. Justine was the only one who witnessed the most important scene in Dane's life. The ceremony was conducted by Ralph. Dane was so excited to see the man he respected most. He vowed to dedicate his life to God. Just like Ralph, he gave up the good life Ralph had prepared for him to go to a small place close to home. I think I will feel closer to God, better able to do his work in a simpler place. And in choosing Gilly, I can make my mother happy. I'm so proud of you, Dane. I doubt that a man could be prouder of his own. Before Dane left, the two siblings went out one last time. On the beach, they told each other what was on their minds. Justine says Rainer asked her to marry him, but she refused because she didn't think she could love anyone and didn't think she had accepted him. Dane knew very well that it was because of his mother's favoritism that let Justine be like this. Mom didn't love you the way she should. She didn't show you the love you should have had. It's hard for her knowing that. It isn't that you can't love. You've been made to feel that you don't deserve to be loved. But you do. You do. Justine finally couldn't stop hugging Dane and crying. Later, she listened to her brother and wrote a letter, which Raina received and immediately came to her. That day, Dane asked Justine to go to the beach. Justine refused because she wanted to be with Raina. However, this caused her a lifetime of regret. The boy was swimming in the sea. The girl swam towards him excitedly. Dane politely responded to the conversation, but three seconds later, his expression turns frightened and he shouts that there is an undercurrent. The girls don't know what's going on, but they keep swimming. <coughs> Dane swam to the girls' rescue but was dragged out of this world forever. Justine was devastated when she found out about it. She always felt that the tragedy was caused by her desire to have fun with Rainer and let Dane go swimming alone. She took Dane back to Drogheda, accompanied by Ralph. Ralph was also very sad about Dane's death and was determined to give him a final ride. The wind blows, and he is gone, and his place never sees him again. On the contrary, Maggie remained calm. She seemed to anticipate that God would take Dane away from her, because Dane had been a part of Ralph that she had stolen from him all along. Dane was your son too, yours and mine. Ralph was frowning in disbelief. He stumbled out, but he hadn't taken the steps before he couldn't stand it any longer and knelt down and cried out. Once he thought he'd done a perfect job, he'd lived up to God and he'd lived up to Maggie. But now he realized he had failed to be a good priest, a good man, and a good father. After this incident, Ralph had aged a lot. Maggie returned to the manor. Rainer tells her that Justine wants to give up drama and love out of guilt and stay with Maggie at Drogheda. Maggie doesn't say anything about it. She and Justine have always had a cold relationship and she doesn't blame Justine for it. Maggie's mother saw this and asked Rainer to leave first. She stayed behind to talk to Maggie. Over the years, she has watched Maggie go through the same life as she did. That is, favoring her son over her daughter. You've lived your life as I did mine. Driven. Always driven. I don't know and never will. How much of our lives we're allowed to choose. How much is decided long before we're born. She apologized to Maggie and apologized for her neglect. At that moment, Maggie couldn't hold back her mother's embrace and cried. Later she found her daughter Justine and had an open conversation about her past, about her failed marriage. She talked about her preference for Dane and her neglect of Justine. 
Finally, she said, Comfort me to watch you hand me your life like a sacrifice. What I need most is your forgiveness. You have your work. And you have the love of a man who will never break your heart. That's more than most of us get in a lifetime, Jesse. Don't give it up for anything. After Dane left the world, Justine is their hope. She must continue to live a long life so that their grief could end. Justine obeyed her mother's words and left the manor with Rainer a few days later. And Ralph stayed behind. His health was not strong enough to withstand the long journey. All his life he had chosen his ambition and never made the choice of love. He wanted to be a bishop more than he wanted their son and more than he wanted Maggie. Once he had told Maggie the story of the Thornbirds, in the end, he never thought he would become the Thornbill. Maggie was all his desire and destruction. It was also the trail of blood he left behind when he never stopped flying.